when we see, the more we see into this kind of attachment to views, attachment to uh, fixing ourselves in some way, we recognise the extent to that, how much that creates more and more suffering, I'm afraid. It's a very uh, humiliating and painful reality. So this process to attachment to limited views creates suffering. And the more we release from that, the more liberation becomes a, a possibility. And this uh, releasing ourselves from li limiting views is liber uh, liberating. It's life-giving. It's the goal of practice, really, to release from views. And this releasing, this constant releasing from views, is actually the most heroic thing that we can do with our lives. It's the most challenging. It requires the most fearlessness. But this is our, the task of Buddhism, really, to just constantly keep releasing from any kind of limited perspective. So I'm just going to end uh, by trying to point this experience in a way that I hope might be useful. And uh, I'm going to do this by talking, uh, just referring to three terms that comes from uh, the writings of James Hillman. Now, James Hillman, I personally think, is an amazing thinker, psychologist, archetypal psychologist. I think he's a, a great writer. And he wrote this amazing book called Alchemical Psychology. And uh, in this book, he's describing really poetically, insightfully, the whole dynamics of the, of the spiritual life, the spiritual journey. And he uses the imagery of alchemy to, uh, to discuss this, uh, this journey. And the terms that I really want to uh, mention tonight are three terms. Uh, so there's putrefaction, salting and beheading. <coughs> and these terms, I think they're just fantastic. As kind of, um, they uh, really uh, capture, I think, the essence of spiritual death. So just to say, uh, one of the great things about Hillman is that he says there is not one meaning to any event or any symbol. It's very much dependent on, uh, on our perspective, on our attitude, <coughs> on our understanding of any experience. And through that, we either make our experience life-affirming or life-denying. And I think that kind of that flexibility to the facts of our life are very important. Uh, so I think that the word <laughs> putrefaction, for instance, that's quite a strong word, really. And it can have these two qualities, these two aspects to it. So let's have a look at putrefaction. So putrefaction is the breaking down. It's the dissolution of any fixed system of shape. It's this sense of the form that we've relied on beginning just to dissolve, fall apart. And this is a really necessary part of the process. The process of falling apart is crucial to the spiritual life. So we lose our bearing. And the structures of certainty and reasoning, all that we relied on in the past, have become, uh, begin to putrefy into this state of unknowing, the state of uncertainty and darkness. But also, putrefaction is really revealing to us that something is moving. It's the whole process of rotting down is an incredible life-affirming uh, process. It's what makes the space for the new seed, the new growth, to, to grow through. So it's a very natural process, and it's a very um, affirming process. So to really see this space of precious fluidity that is arising in us, 
to really kind of see it from that perspective can really support us to bear, to be in a state of putrefaction, to really allow ourselves to rot, to dissolve. This seemed to be, well, it is fruitful if we can bear it. It's actually the way that our life can begin to move into the next phase. We can't know uh, the nature of this process is we can't really kind of foresee the, the plant, the life that's going to emerge out of that stage. So we have to really trust to bear with this quality, this state of putrefaction. And not see it that there's something wrong with us. That we are kind of we failed in some way. It's actually a really fruitful uh, experience if we can kind of approach <clears throat> it from this in this way. And of course, we need to to bear this. We need to be able <coughs> to uh, hold this uh, experience in the container of love, of care, of kindness. This is why it's so crucial to, to uh, develop the art of, uh, of the metta, metta bhavna practice. To really be kind towards ourselves in these periods of putrefaction. Because otherwise we either become overwhelmed or we become over-identified and lost in a particular experience. So the metta... This positive emotion really creates enough space for us to breathe within the practice, within the experience. So, so metta is not actually a, a specific experience, but it's a quality to awareness itself. So metta infuses our attention. It supports us to turn towards, towards that which is unbearable. It allows us to turn towards our own dissolving, and to, be, uh, to make space for this new life that is emerging through that process. So the next quality, the next quality is salting. So salting, uh, well salt is a preservative. And one of the things it does, it really cleans out wounds. And it stings. It hurts. But also, salt really brings out the flavour to experience. And salt dries things out. It thickens things which becomes too fluid. Too uh, amorphous. So salting, in relation to spiritual practice, what that's doing is it really brings out the flavour that is here in our experience. So we add salt to our experience, and that salting so that we can really taste the experience. Too much salt on our wounds, and they sting and burn us. We become overwhelmed. Too little salt... And everything, we're just becoming different to experience, indifferent to our practice, our spiritual life. So the art of salting our experience, this seemed to be really crucial for allowing us to, to make use of it. To differentiate really what is happening. And what salt does, it starts to dry out this flow of decomposition. <clears throat> it starts to bring out the subtle underlying uh, flavours to the experience of decomposition, of, of uh, putrefac putrefaction. So really salting, reflecting, sitting with is the kind of the way that we uh, make use of these difficult experiences, these overwhelming experiences. Salting is giving time for reflection. Salting is preserving the lessons of our spiritual death for the life to come, for our future benefit. So we're making use of these kind of processes that we find ourselves within. 
Finally, we come to beheading. So beheading, that's this uh, sensation of being beheaded by life. Really. What do I mean by that? Well, it could be some tragedy, some illness, national, uh, natural disaster, the blow of love, the blow of beauty. And it's as if we're fragmented, we're kind of blown apart in the experience. So we can't see the function as we did. Our kind of life doesn't quite fit somehow. So this is the kind of sense that, uh, well, it's all a bit uh, become difficult to manage. Ordinary life feels rather, can feel rather remote or, or meaningless. We might feel a bit alienated from our own experience, alienated from those around us. So this is the kind of uh, the difficult aspect of feeling beheaded, that this kind of, we just cut away, really. We can't function. But um, it can also be an ally in this really difficult phase of spiritual death. So what happens in the beheading process is that we become more vid vividly aware of the different parts of our being. So this uh, beginning to separate out and differentiate the different parts of ourself, uh, we can start to, uh, to see that uh, this sense of I, of me comes out of a whole range of different experiences. That this kind of imaginary I is actually a series of fragments, really. We have these different parts of ourselves, And some will still be putrefying, but there will be parts of us that are still able to care, that are able to feel love, patience, that, bring, that can be relieving and stabilising in this process of change. The main thing that happens through this is that we notice that awareness itself remains throughout all these processes. Awareness itself remains unaffected. So the attention that we give to this apparently fragmented nature remains unaffected, unchanging. So the separating out of the different parts, our head, our body, and awareness itself. And we recognise, we begin to recognise that awareness itself is actually completely open. Awareness itself is completely unbounded, unlimited in any way. Awareness simply meets changing experience as it is. Each time we do this in meditation, whatever the object is that we are focusing on, that quality of awareness, it's just awareness. It's just meeting a rising experience. So we're becoming beheaded, we can begin to differentiate, to separate out the arising experiences from the, awareness, from the awareness within which these experiences are arising and fading. And in this way we begin to rely more and more on awareness itself, rather than being identified with any of these fleeting sensations arising within it. And we begin to recognise that the clear sky of awareness is not different from the arising sensations within awareness itself. They are a piece, they are a whole. The clear sky permeates all experience and is the true nature, the true source of all arising experience. And in that real knowing, the source, the root of spiritual death is revealed. 